is going on everybody welcome back to RC Car Garage and we're back again with the WPL C24-1 so in the last video as you guys saw the uh, this thing didn't do too bad but it didn't do too well either so the articulation on this thing um, the shocks are a little too stiff for it there's not much articulation with these shocks that I put on there. Yes, they are nice looking. I will admit the shocks on here are very nice looking, but it does not give the articulation that I wanted this thing to have. Uh, the other thing is that it is sitting up higher than I wanted it to sit, which uh, does not work out for me so it doesn't work out for me it, the back as there's a reason why it's like this but the back of it as you guys can see is just sits up too high I kind of wanted that height right about there that to me is just a little too high but that is where I wanted it to be the reason that you guys can probably see that the front is actually squatting the wall not squatting but the front is actually lower than the rear is because I adjusted the front links on the front upper links on this thing and what happened was now the um, the servo under here is actually hitting the there you go so the servo is now hitting the top links there and it actually kind of pushed the front down that's what it did I, I, I don't know so what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm still going to use these shocks for testing purposes. And if I like what I do with them, if they work out right, I might end up keeping them. If not, I'm going to get some different shocks for this thing. Um, but what I'm planning on doing with this is take the springs off of the other three that are on here that I believe this one here does not have a spring in there I took that out already which is literally right here that's a spring for it but I filled it with oil so hopefully to help the dampening and everything and the other three has the springs in it no oil which I am intending on taking the springs out putting oil in there just to help dampen it and uh, see how that is going to help perform now, I did get some other upgrades for this thing, which are right here in this baggie that I have. And we are going to go through and see what exactly I got for this. So again, the uh, steering was not doing all that great with the steering. Um, I think it can do better. The steering angle, I believe this thing should have more steering angle than it did. Um, I, but I also think with the way I had the front upper links extended more, it wasn't helping the turning radius on this thing. But um, I think this will help with the turning of it. So let's go over and see what we got. So on the first baggie that I got, WPL, as you can see, I got, these are all metal. As you can see, metal front axles, right? Those are front, yep, metal front axles. And from WPL, the metal rear axles that I got, that I got here. I have also got drive shafts. Yes, metal drive shafts, bearings, and metal gears that come with the kit. And I looks like I've uh, got some links here and a couple of other things. Here. Here we go, right here. So, what I'm going to wind up doing now is basically take this whole guy back apart again. The wheels, as you guys noticed, the wheels do not have that little cap right here. They don't have that little cap on it because I was already expecting to 
do all of this. So I decided not to put that on. And on another note, this thing's got some weight. It's got a little bit of weight to it. So it could possibly help with the weight down low. So less topple over. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So what I'm gonna do is take the body back off of it again, take the chassis, put it to the side, take the wheels back off, um, basically take all of this apart and transfer all of this goodness onto here. All right, you guys, so here we are. I got the front and the rear axle complete. Uh, they are nice and smooth. Uh, I did have an issue with uh, with it binding up a little bit. So if you do go to get these metal axles and uh, when you put them all together and if they do start binding, what you're gonna have to do, if you guys see the white right there and right there, those are paper shims. So you're gonna have to add those paper shims in there to space it out perfectly so that way the gearing doesn't start binding up and you don't get this nice smooth movement. So now that I got that put together, the next thing that I am going to do is the drive shafts. I have the drive shafts here. The plastic ones will not fit. The plastic stock ones that come with the WPL C24, they do not fit on here. I try putting them in last night and it wasn't working so don't try to use a stock <laughs> drive shaft use the drive shafts that are going to come with the kit so i'm going to go ahead put this on and see how this goes so let's see how the drive shafts get put together Put the ring right on top there, the snap ring, and it's gonna hold everything here together. So I'm gonna do this, actually. Put the rest of this on, there you go. So I'm gonna put the rest of this guy together, put him on the truck, and be back with you guys. All right, you guys, and here it is complete 100% complete I got the drive shafts back in I got the axles the metal axles that are on uh, metal drive shafts that came with the axle kit so if you end up getting the axle kit for any of the C series uh, WPLs they do bring drive shafts as long as you get them from WPL um, again I ended up ordering another set because the first set that I ordered, the um, the steering knuckles were not lining up properly with the axles. So I don't know what the deal was with it and I didn't really want to bother with them anymore. So I ended up ordering ones from WPL, even though it's crazy because even the package on here does say WPL you guys can clearly see it says WPL but for some odd apparent reason the uh, they weren't working properly so I ended up just biting the bullet and I bought another set I'm actually gonna send that back and uh, put them on and they're working prop perfectly on here so I've already tested this thing out and it is working very well so now what we're gonna do going to take this out it is kind of cold out windy so I'm going to apologize right now if there's any wind that you guys are going to be hearing in the video uh, but I might be able to edit that out and put some music on just so the wind doesn't get too overwhelming but again like I was saying with the suspension um, I'm more than likely probably going to take the, sus 
the springs out from inside. They are internal springs, so I'm probably more than likely going to take the springs out of them and probably just fill them up with oil and see how it's going to uh, see how it's going to work. Because um, for my taste, these are a little too uh, stiff. The springs that are on here, they're a little too stiff. Uh, the other thing with this is, as you guys can see, messing with the. Uh, shocks here there is no bump steer so doing this route with the axle mount of servo metal links it completely eliminates the bump steer that these things really tend to have so without further ado let's go on outside to the crawl course see how this thing performs and we'll come back inside and we'll talk about it
All right, you guys, and there it is, the WPL C24-1. Uh, I do believe that the steering improved compared to the stock plastic drive shafts that it came with. I mean, I do think that it could do better on the steering with a better controller where you can end up setting up your steering endpoints and everything. I believe that it will do better, but only time will tell. Uh, I am planning on upgrading the electronics in this. Uh, it is still underpowered. The motor that's in here and it's still underpowered. I do believe, I think the battery isn't, it was fully charged a couple days ago. Um, but I mean, it's so cold out there that I think that the battery just started losing its power with the weather. So this is still on the stock battery that it comes with. Um, I'm using the stock battery that it comes with to power this thing still. And um, I think it did a lot better than previously. Can it do better? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, with upgrading the electronics, upgrading the controller where you can set up your steering endpoints, it should be able to steer a lot better than it does. But only time will tell, we will see. That will probably end up being in a future uh, video that I will probably end up upgrading this thing and see what it can do. These tires have pretty good amount of grip but there's not enough sidewall on it. And you guys can see it in that run that the wheel just kept on rubbing up against the rocks. Granted, yes, not a big deal, but it just doesn't have the sidewall. Like I'm just pushing it down. You can see there is no sidewall to these tires. So these tires would be good for a trail truck. If I, can, if I decided to just leave this as a trail truck, which I might end up doing, these tires will be good, but for crawling wise, uh, you definitely it's definitely going to need uh, bigger sidewall tires. I'm going to have to look and see if I can get a bigger sidewall tire for this thing because <laughs> these tires, as a little bit of grip that they have, pretty good amount of grip that they have, they're just not tall enough. Uh, it did also get hung up a lot because of these tires. I think if I could find, because the, again, these are 1.3 inch wheels and tires. And I think if I can get a taller 1.3 inch tire, that it will, will end up helping this guy out immensely. Um, again, the articulation with these shocks I mean, there's a lot more that it can go, but because of the spring that's in there, it's not giving out the articulation that I want. I do like the, sus the suspension on this thing, the Mius, Muse, however you pronounce it. I do like these shocks. They are nice, very nice looking shocks, but the spring is just way too hard uh, to, um, for rock crawling with this thing. It didn't do too bad, but I think with removing those shocks, it might do better. Again, I think I'm gonna leave this as a trail truck and not a rock crawler. And um, that's where I'm planning on going with this thing. The other thing that I ended up doing, hopefully you guys can see right back here, I may kind of sort of type a roll bar sort of thing. So, I am actually in the works of doing this. I made this as a template sort of thing. Um, these are aluminum 3... 332nd aluminum tubes that I ended up finding at the uh, my local hobby store. Hobby Lobby, I think it was, that I ended up finding these tubes at. And what my plan for this thing intentionally was is to get that. That is the look that I'm looking for. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think. I think that looks pretty damn awesome on this truck. So it's still a work in progress. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to 
finish this up. <laughs> Again, I don't have any type of, uh, I'm an appliance installer. I don't have any type of machinery that I can end up building my own rack per se. So I'm in the process of probably getting a welder or something that I can be able to make this. Um, but that's where I'm at with this right now. I think that as a trail truck would end up looking awesome on here. Now let me know down in the comment section. Should I leave it up this high or should I lower it down a little bit right about to there? I don't know. You guys let me know down in the comment section below. So without further ado, I will see you guys in another video. You all have a good one. You keep RCing.